And I'll say this right now, if no matter what, if you are in Japan and you're a foreigner and a Japanese person tries to provoke you in any way, just walk away. You're not going to win that battle. Hi, welcome to the Black Experience Japan's Melanated Files. The purpose of this series is to highlight the black people living in Japan. Who are they? My name is Ocean Evers Pete. I'm from Raleigh, North Carolina. I've been in Japan for about a year and a half this time. And I am a software engineer by day and by night. I'm a musician and artist. Why Japan? Okay, so that starts um, back when I was in uni. I first came to Japan as a part of my study abroad program for my school. Uh, I needed to do one study abroad experience to graduate and I was very interested in like Japanese fashion and culture. Um, I was kind of getting into the music then too. So uh, I decided to go to Kyoto, uh, Doshisa University, and I promptly did terribly in all my classes, but picked up a lot of new skills that uh, kind of took me to where I am now. I started uh, DJing with friends and first got into modeling and um, so when I went back to America my goal was kind of like okay let's get back to Japan but let's do it while kind of trying to build the career that I had in mind from before so um, I went through my last year of uni and did some internships and uh, got a job which I'm not with them anymore but uh, they at least got me my initial visa I decided I wanted to come back out here and uh, you know, did my internships in my last year of school and uh, I applied to some jobs through this thing called the Boston Career Forum, which uh, if you're on the East Coast and you want to come to Japan, I suggest checking it out. And uh, I got a job. They sponsored my visa and brought me out here as soon as I graduated. So that was about a year and a half now. And I left the company about six months ago, but it got my career started when it comes to the software engineering side and has kept me kind of floating through jobs comfortably. So coming to Tokyo was definitely interesting because I, of course, had lived in Japan before, but living in Kyoto and the Kansai area was uh, so different than coming to a city like Tokyo. Coming to Tokyo, it almost felt like coming to, like going to New York or something like that. It's, uh, even though it is still like a fairly homogenous city because you know, Japan is a homogenous country, it's still very unique and diverse. There's uh, a lot of different social cliques there's a lot of different foreigners from different countries who are interacting in um, very interesting fields. So I was kind of taken aback at first and it, it honestly like it, uh, it derailed me for a bit. The first few months I spent a lot more time kind of absorbing and experiencing than actually creating and focusing on like um, my day job or even my side hustles and interests, things like that. The thing is, no matter what, no matter how progressive they try to seem on the outside, and how they try to sell themselves to you, the Japanese companies are still Japanese companies. And the work culture is still going to be very traditionally Japanese. And like I said, I left that company about six months ago now. And it was due to the, probably the conflicts in the work culture from what I'm used to, and I guess what is the status quo in Japan. One big thing I realized is that um, no matter how they try to sell it, no matter what bells and whistles they try to put on top, a Japanese company is still going to be a Japanese company. They're going to have that strict bureaucratic Japanese culture and if you can't deal with that it's probably better to find something that is smaller or foreign based or it doesn't mean don't come here but um, look for alternatives. The company I was with you know sold themselves as progressive as trying to be like Silicon Valley like I myself had experience working in Silicon Valley, so I was very used to that idea of like, uh, like for, uh, flexible hours, creativity, open office space, you know, sharing ideas, flat structure with employees, and uh, they, they tried to kind of sell me on that, and then it seemed nice at first. I got there and there's like the free lunch, there's like oh like nice desk, everyone gets a laptop, and um, at least some diversity on the lower level. Once you get to the managerial level, not as much. But that's the problem is that, yeah, when it comes down to it, it's like all the managers were still Japanese. Um, anyone above, you know, just a normal engineer was probably Japanese. And there was still the whole chain of hierarchy that everything had to go through like eight people up and back down. Just and then, like they were very strict about, you know, this is the typical Japanese things. And in the end, what happened was um, my mental health wasn't doing too well around like surrounding that and other events with just being abroad and culture shock and things like that and instead of trying to support me they kind of 
put more pressure on me and alienated me a bit. So I waited about a year just to you know, kind of give them the time I thought they deserved for getting me out of here. And then I took my leave. But I do have to say that thanks to that experience and thanks to working with them, it, I was very quickly able to hop into another like, company and kind of find something that fit me better and fit the culture I was used to better. So it's definitely not impossible to find it out here. It's very possible. It's just maybe you have to know exactly what you're looking for and be prepared to deal with some of the things that maybe you don't have to deal with back home, especially as an engineer coming from a place like America. So the thing I like the most about Japan is probably um, all the people I've met. I think my network of people has quadrupled since I first came out here. And I've made some like, very good friends, very creative friends, and learned a lot from a lot of these uh, people. Even now, um, a big part of the reason when I came out back out was, like I said, not just to do engineering, but also to work back on um, my music and to work on my art. I'm always meeting new people. Everyone's so eclectic and interesting. They have so many different interests. Um, I'm just learning a lot of things, picking up a lot, and getting to try a lot of new things and seeing different perspectives that I don't think I would have got if I just stayed in America. Of course, like, I was creating there, and there were creative people there. But something about being on the other side of the world and having to do all this in such a foreign environment, I think it sparks a new level of creativity in people, and it also creates another layer that we can all kind of connect on. Usually when we're not, not Japanese, but also even with other Japanese people, because I feel like Japanese people working in those creative spaces do also kind of feel a bit maybe alienated from the everyday society. So it's just like another layer, another level everyone connects on and um, kind of facilitates working together and creating new experiences, new art, things like that. The things I like the least, well, um, outside of the work culture in like the big companies, um, there are, I've run into some issues with how the criminal justice system works. If you look into like a lot of the laws that go into the, how convictions are handled, how prosecutors are allowed to behave, um, how the police handle guilt versus innocence, it's, a lot of it's very skewed towards you know, a, a kind of guilty until proven guilty mindset. And when you're a foreigner, that doesn't help at all. Basically, uh, of course, I've had the, the average run-of-the-mill black person in Japan experiences of, oh, you got stopped and searched, and I understand that to a certain extent. And you also have your rights. You can like, deny them to search you and things like that. But I've had one specific experience that kind of uh, shaped how I view and understand and digest these things when it comes to how the police and how the criminal justice system works. About half a year ago, I knew someone who acted fairly stupidly and um, slapped somebody after being provoked in the streets. And I'll say this right now, if no matter what, if you are in Japan and you're a foreigner and a Japanese person tries to provoke you in any way, just walk away. You're not going to win that battle. If you lay, even if you lay a finger on them in self-defense, you're still going to lose that battle. But this guy, um, he slapped this man who had been causing a scene and him and his friends were being very loud and a bit racist towards us. And it got wrapped up with the police. In the same event, I had um, pushed away someone who was trying to attack this girl with, that was with us. And I had left the scene. So after this, because of the other guy slapping somebody, the police, of course, got involved. And I, they just kind of handled it with him at first. He had to go, he was detained for about 11 days without actually formally being charged with anything, which, I mean, I think that's kind of unfair in itself. I don't think what he did was necessarily right, but to be detained and denied communication with the outside, with your friends, we even went to you know, see him. He was supposed to have visiting hours legally and they wouldn't let us, but uh, that's, that's kind of inhumane. But uh, he, once he paid uh, the settlement that they required of him, which is about 300,000 yen, uh, they released him. Luckily, because, strangely enough, luckily because he was arrested, he was able to get free legal service. So he didn't have to pay for that. A month after that event, the police came to my house uh, and entered it without a warrant. And uh, they wanted to say that they wanted to talk about the situation. So I kind of like wanted them to leave. It was the morning I was getting ready to go to work. 
And they were very like persistent, trying to get me to go with them, saying they'd drive me to work and stuff. Then I got them to eventually leave and rescheduled a meeting where I would come on my own time two days later. And um, I set up the interview. And I go in for a six hour interrogation, explain the whole situation, explain that like, um, you know, I didn't assault anybody. It was self-defense. Like they, one of them was trying to grab at a girl who was with us and I simply pushed him away with one hand and then left the situation. So, and the police were okay with that. They said, all right, and they let me go. And the situation was quiet and dropped until about one month ago. Uh, so one month ago, I get a call from the prosecutor and uh, to keep it fairly, to keep it shorter than it actually is, the prosecutor wanted me to pay for a lawyer to handle an out-of-court settlement. So he wanted me to pay for the legal fees and then he wanted me to pay this settlement, which in total would be around, I think, Lokumanen. Oh, so the settlement would be for, um, for assaulting this man, this other man who wasn't slapped, uh, but who was also there. Uh, the one that I said I pushed away from a friend when he was trying to grab her. So he claimed that I attacked him and that he sustained an injury to his head that took two weeks to heal. That's very obviously not true. So anyway, I told the prosecutor that like I'd have to take the time to gather the money and and immediately went and like sought out legal counsel because this isn't right. Um, had another meeting with the prosecutor actually after I talked to legal, like my legal advisors, and you know, kind of told him that like this is self-defense. It's in the police statement. The police had agreed and let me go. But how it works here is that uh, there is a 99.5% rate of conviction on all cases brought to the prosecutor in Tokyo and in Japan overall. I think what they do is if they do not think that they can get an indictment and get a conviction on the indictment what they will do is get you to settle out of court just to drop the whole thing because if not then they have to take it to court and if they take it to court they're going to try their damnedest to get you convicted to keep up that conviction rate or you know it just looks really bad on them they, they really want to keep that rate high that's the the whole point of the system isn't redemption or like a rehabilitation it's convictions the other problem with this system when it comes to that is that there is no double jeopardy in Japan. So let's say you actually did manage to go to court, pay all the legal fees to beat the system that's already a bit stacked against you as a foreigner. They can appeal, the prosecutor can appeal that decision as many times as possible until he gets the conviction that he wants. So in this case, I thought after you know standing my ground a bit, uh, maybe it's best to just pay this settlement, get it out of the way. But that goes to say, that's the experience I had with the criminal justice system here. And I still believe I didn't do anything wrong. I think in any other country, any other government, what I did would have been seen as, you know, a just and right thing, you know, defending someone who's weaker, defending a girl. You know. But in Japan, sadly, it's not like that. Most of the time, if you're a foreigner and the other person is a Japanese person, whatever they say will be taken and held above what you say. And the courts are definitely not going to side with you and they're going to push for just getting a conviction and or getting money for a settlement to just erase this from the records in general so that they can keep their country looking pristine legally on paper. The best life advice I've probably received is like, a, it's kind of like a, a compound, I guess, advice that I received. It was um, on one level, it was just that like no one's really special. 99% of people aren't special. And everything that is attained can be attained through hard work. And then on top of that, to say whatever you think is the proper decision or the proper path to go down, you should follow your own instincts and put your all into that. And that's how you kind of attain your dreams, quote unquote. I guess the funniest thing that's happened to me as a black person, when I was uh, like 20, 21, and I was going to school in in Kyoto. I used to, like when I first got to Japan, uh, my hair was a bit longer and um, I, my Japanese wasn't that good. And I would walk around and people would always say like, yabai. And I had a general idea that this word meant bad. And I always thought people were just like walking by me and saying, like just saying something negative about me. And it was really starting to frustrate me one day. And um, so one day, I remember like a month after that started happening, I talked to one of my Japanese friends and I was like, why does everybody keep saying yabai when they see me? Like, am I weird? Am I ugly? Like, do I look like a monster to them or something? And then he's like, oh no, dude, like uh, in slang, he's like, that just means like, oh, cool. He's like, they probably just like your hair or something. It looks different. And like fully flipped the perspective I was starting to form about Japan at the time. 
and like yeah maybe enjoy things a lot more then dating in japan i haven't done too much of it i'm, I'm in a relationship now um, my girlfriend she's actually lived here for about five years and she's not japanese so <laughs> that's i'd say maybe the most interesting thing i can say is that um the way we connected was really interesting it's like we were both you know foreigners in a new place she's not from the same country as me our experiences and our backgrounds are definitely different but we really bonded over that you know the shared outsiderness i guess over the things that despite the large cultural gaps that we should have had that we actually had in common i of course in the past have you know, dated with Japanese girls before, usually sh very short periods of time. But I always felt like there's a there's always a wall I hit where, uh, like, there's certain things, some of my morals maybe, or um, the things I care about, usually in like socioeconomic circumstances, like they just didn't translate. They don't translate across the cultures very well. I tried to explain how I feel about topics surrounding, you know, race and class and all these things that you know. I guess it's cool and like fun to talk about in America and to learn about, but maybe not here. And just, you know, people wouldn't get it. And that type of stuff is important to me, to have those type of conversations, those intellectual conversations that help you kind of grow spiritually, intellectually. So, yeah, that's, I kind of, yeah, dated like a few Japanese girls and was like, uh, this keeps ending up being the same way. I'd say, don't come here to like run away from something. Like, I know a lot of people have make jokes about like, oh, I came here because, you know, it's safer from the police and things like that. And like, or like, oh, I just didn't like how I was being treated in America. I, I wouldn't come here for that because the grass is always greener on the other side and every place has its own problems. You know, I used to kind of buy into the whole, like the police example uh, too, but now I know that like the type of harassment I've gotten out here is different, but it hurts just the same. But. I don't regret coming out here and that's I think the biggest reason I don't regret coming out here is because I came because I had a goal. You come here because you have a goal, have a plan, have something you want to accomplish. You know, don't just come out here to float and don't just come out here because you think it's some paradise that will alleviate problems. You have a whole new and different set of problems and that's that holds true for no matter where you go in the world. But if you have a goal and you have something you want to do and that you're working at and you think Japan is a part of it then you'll come here and you'll flourish, I think. On the internet, uh, there's a few places you can find me. The main one would probably be Instagram, uh, ocean underscore evers. I do a lot of work with my brother for his clothing brand, uh, Renaissance For All. It's this right here. So if you go to renaissanceforall.com, we occasionally upload blogs there. There's always new clothing that we're designing going up. And the last one is, if, especially if you're in Japan, um, would be dosing.jp or their Instagram we are dosing we're always you know throwing cool events that we want people to come out to, to come have fun thank you so much for watching if you'd like to see weekly videos about the black experience in Japan feel free to subscribe to this channel if you know someone that would like to be featured or if you yourself would like to be featured send us a message on our Facebook page at the black experience Japan or send us a tweet on Twitter at the black X JP thank you so much for watching we'll see you next time Bye for now.